بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اینڈ السلام علیکم پاکستان ویلکم بیک ٹو آ سیریز آف سیشنز وچ آر ریلیٹڈ ٹو کرپشن اینڈ اینٹی کرپشن ٹرانسپیرنسی انٹیگریٹی اینڈ آنیسٹی ٹوڈے اس ٹاپک از بیسکلی ٹرانسپیرنسی اینڈ ٹرانسپیرنسی پروموٹنگ انسٹیٹیوشنز ناؤ واٹ وی سی بیسکلی اوور ہیئر از از دیٹ آن ون سائڈ دیر از اے لاٹ آف کرپشن دیر از اے لاٹ آف ڈیویشن فرام پروسیجرز لاز رولز اینڈ ریگولیشن اینڈ پیپل Uh, tend to amass huge uh, wealth and that is all uh, black money which leads to a black economy and then it leads to something which is called money laundering so that their black money can become white money uh, and then they park those resources uh, in uh, offshore companies and also uh, in certain uh, small islands and places where it becomes very difficult to trace uh, the, the black money uh, at all. Now when we are talking about uh, transparency then it allows detection because it lowers the Uh, information barrier allowing for scrutiny and monitoring. Uh, according to the Asian Development Bank uh, and OECD, transparency is vital to cultivate public trust in government and to deter, uh, prevent and detect uh, corruption effectively. So it's not only uh, about preventing and detecting corruption, it's also about deterring. That means proactively engaging and ensuring that corruption does not take place. And uh, again, in a country like Pakistan, uh, there is uh, immense uh, thought Uh, and critical thinking going in that we have basically this youth bulge of uh, 60% plus and how are we going to imbue, imbue and inculcate the right values into them so that we have a stronger uh, social sector, a stronger private sector and a stronger uh, government sector uh, all in tandem uh, with each other and trying to eliminate corruption uh, at all levels of society and in all the uh, different communities of Pakistan. So it is a very big challenge and therefore the The greater the number of temptation to which the exercise of political power is exposed, the more necessary it is to give those who possess it. So again, what we are seeing is that uh, there are temptations and especially when people have political power or they also have uh, what we say uh, the uh, bureaucratic power or any other form of power, uh, it unfortunately is abused and misused and that definitely has to be uh, curtailed. According to Article 10 of the UNAC, UNAC uh, list, transferring measures for government such as uh, one, establishing procedures by which citizens can obtain information about the public administration, uh, two, simplifying public access to the authorities and number three, publishing information uh, in, uh, including on risks of corruption in the public administration. So what we see is, is that there is a multi-pronged approach and it could be uh, any of these uh, to ensure that there is uh, lesser corruption uh, in society. We also see that when we are talking about uh, transparency promoting institutions then uh, we have uh, the very ubiquitous uh, NAB as the apex body that deals with cases of corruption. Uh, assisting NAB is the federal investigation agency which, is, which investigates uh, those cases which fall in the ambit of the Prevention of Corruption Act 1947. So that is also uh, supporting uh, the, the NAB. Uh, we have the public accounts committee both at the federal and at the provincial level and that basically keeps a check on government's exercise of fiscal powers. The, the Election Commission of Pakistan also has authority to investigate corruption uh, allegations against any elected representative and therefore uh, it is also a very powerful body uh, which can be resorted to. And then what we see is that there are certain uh, economic governance regulatory institutions in the country, uh, foremost is the State Bank of Pakistan, uh, then we have the Federal Bureau of Revenue, uh, we also have the uh, Competition Commission of Pakistan and then the Securities Exchange of Pakistan. So, All of these organizations are working tandem with each other and they are trying to uh, fight uh, against corruption and find ways whereby a better society can emerge and therefore these are extremely important and critical organizations. There is also, ladies and gentlemen, the office of Faki Motasip Ombudsman which was set up in 1983 as an accountability mechanism to strength public trust in governance. So uh, this came up in 1983 and this is independent. So the public does not have to go through the court which is a very long process and sometimes can take Uh, more than one and a half years can go up to two years. But in the Ombudsman office, you don't even need a lawyer. You just, just write your application and you go and submit it and there will be a date which is given and based upon that, then the judge would be deciding. So therefore, uh, there is a process and also a quick process which can ensure that there is expeditious justice because uh, justice delayed is always justice denied. Uh, the presidential order was later amended by the Federal Ombudsman Institutional Reforms Act of 2004. Uh, what we see is that the first, it was uh, late uh, in um, 2000, uh, what we see is that uh, over there, uh, first NAB 
was differently constituted. But then in 2013, the Supreme Court came up with a landmark uh, definition and also a landmark, uh, uh, landmark suggestion and recommendation, which changed the whole context of a NAV and made it much more uh, effective. So uh, that was good. There are autonomous ombudsman institutions at the federal and provincial level. So all the provinces have them and the federal have them, but they're independent of each other. And ombudspersons have been empowered to call forth information from any source. So it is the power to call information which basically constitutes uh, their, uh, their importance. And also the fact that, uh, again, um, another institution which we can look at is also the, uh, the Information Commission of Punjab, uh, whereby information is provided. And if it is not provided, then a complete legal process starts against that particular government official or that particular department. So there are various uh, organs which are working hand in hand to ensure that there is more integrity, more in honesty, more truth, and uh, most importantly, that there is accountability, uh, which uh, is a very negation of uh, corruption. And that should be curbed so that growth in Pakistan can improve and become much better. So basically, we've seen that there are uh, different institutions which are involved, there are different laws which are involved, and then the combination of all of this with the right person and the right attitude, uh, wonders can be achieved. And that is the very essence uh, of corporate governance to optimize and to ensure that there is a safe uh, working environment. And when we talk about safety, then this is also a very important aspect that how can you uh, protect yourself against corruption or not be compelled to do something which you can regret for the rest of your life. Thank you so much.